Most of the bees that you'll see this spring feeding on blossoms in your garden won't be honeybees. In fact, these bees, I rate it the fact that I'm standing in their tree, will be part of one of the largest and quite literally underground group of bees in Britain. These are solitary bees. Out of some 270 species of bee native to the UK, 250 of them are in fact solitary bees. Out of some 30,000 species across the world, 90% of them are solitary bees. These seem to make up the majority of bee species, and yet not a lot of people know about them. This is an incredibly diverse group of animals. In fact, some of them will be living in your lawn, some of them in old fences, maybe commandeering a beetle burrow. What all of these have in common is the fact that they live and breed and nest on their own, not in a colony. If this is grouped together in some area for safety and protection, this is known as an aggregation. The majority of solitary bees in the UK dig their own burrows. These are the mining bees, the largest group of bees in the UK. They prefer short turf, recently overturned mud, basically your garden. The mining bee you're probably going to see this time of year, near short turf and also overturned mud piles, is going to be the tawny mining bee. She's recognisable by the reddish fur on her abdomen. Unique to this genus in Britain is the fact they have hairs running down the grooves on the inside of their eyes. These are called facial favea. They build nests in lawns and recently disturbed soil. She's seen from March to June, whereas other solitary bees, much like the early mining bee or ashy mining bees, are found until August. The other major species of mining bee in the UK is the wool card bee. This was discovered by Gilbert White in the 1700s in his house in Selborne, which just goes to show you too can find new species of bee in your back gardens. So they're mining bees, but what actually goes on underground? When a female chooses a piece of land to dig into, and digs a little tunnel within 10 centimetres of the surface, she creates a little chamber. In that chamber she deposits pollen, and then on top of that pollen nectar, and on top of that nectar, a little egg. That is a cell. She closes that chamber, seals it with a little drop of mud, and then moves on to another chamber, laying another egg with more pollen and more nectar. Other solitary bee species prefer to have ready-made homes. For example, the masonry bee will quite happily go for a hole in your house, in your brickwork, in your rockery, hence their name. And some of the other species will quite happily choose bamboo. Those little bee homes or bee hotels that you might get or build, built of little bits of bamboo with a little roof to protect the top from rain, is in fact built for solitary bees to nest in. They'll quite happily lay their egg with a little bit of pollen and nectar inside one of the bits of bamboo and then block the end up with mud. If you are going to do this, make sure the bamboo is pointing in a south direction and make sure that it is in quite a dry and protected area. If it's too windy or too rainy, then they're probably not going to land on a nest there. But where do the solitary bees get their mud from for blocking up holes, building tiny pots in some cases? Well, I'm sitting next to an asparagus patch.
This patch of asparagus has just been watered. There's a lot of fresh, wet mud here. The solitary bees are whoa, currently flying around my head and are collecting as much mud as possible, using this as an opportunity to collect resources to fill in the holes of their nests, to build tiny little pots with, and also, just down here, to dig a little nest of their own. Some of them are aerial nesters, which means they'll produce a little pot or dig into the branches of trees. And there's a tiny little native blue bee which finds old brambles, desiccated and dried, builds its nest in those stems. There's even three species native here to the UK that take snail shells, lay their eggs inside them, and then hide them around people's gardens. These are members of the mason bee family. They will find a desiccated and old snail shell, lay their egg right at the back of that, then fill that with pollen and nectar, and then find tiny stones and bits of gravel, push that in, and then a tiny little mud seal, and then they'll carry that to a hidden position within some long grass, and then they'll cover it with dirt and gravel once again to really make sure it's hidden. These could well be in your gardens. Some people think that these bees will ruin lawns and terrorise their children. <sighs> but the truth is that solitary mining bees aerate the soil, dig into it, producing new minerals and also a really good structure for your plants. They're also one of the bees that actually pollinate multiple types of flower, multiple species, meaning that your whole garden will benefit. Solitary bees are in fact some of the largest pollinators in the UK. If there is a nest near you or in your garden, make the most of it. Have a look at them. And they'll only be around for a few short weeks before they're disappearing entirely. Make the most of it. Have a look. They're peaceable animals. They're not going to sting you. If you want to make sure that they're not going to sting you, just put some adequate footwear on. Even flip-flops will do. They're only going to sting you if you stand on them or put a finger inside their nest. And at that point, I think you deserve it. So if you do see them, have a look. Spread the word that they are in fact peaceful animals. They're not going to sting you, they're not going to hurt you, and they help your garden insurmountably. These are absolutely fascinating little animals, should you get given the chance to see them. I highly recommend it. They're so industrious and just interesting. However, I think I'm in their way, so I will give them some face and, uh, Leave them be. <laughs> oh, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs>